Hello, it's Scott Manley here, once again smashing an asteroid into the Earth for fun and science. This channel has had a long association with asteroids impacting the Earth. Now, a while back, I saw this image by Dean Reeves. It's a, obviously a photo manipulation because no real asteroid could do that. But I began to think, under what situation could an asteroid actually punch all the way through the Earth? And the answer is, of course, under highly artificial conditions, which can only really happen inside a simulation. So it's a good thing that we can bend the universe to our will and set up the simulations of our choosing using smooth particle hydrodynamics in Space Sim. So yeah, let's just show you how this works. We set up the planet Earth. We add an object that's going to hit it. Now that's a bit big, so we can set the size in here. The user interface is a little bit janky, but I can type in 100 kilometers, 100 kilometers, and 100 kilometers. Now that's obviously quite big, quite substantial for an asteroid. Now uh, we need to make it hit the Earth, so let's do it at minus 20 kilometers per second, right? Uh, that's minus 20 meters per second. Let's set that to kilometers per second. Okay, and then of course you can hit play. And there it goes, it'll run this simulation. So obviously this thing is made of a whole bunch of little particles and it's going to smash into the Earth at a typical velocity of a near-Earth asteroid. Now, a 100km object would pretty much devastate the ecosystem of the planet Earth, but it's actually not going to do that much to the planet Earth in general. You see, it's sort of just... Well, it doesn't even unearth chunks of the mantle. Now, this is obviously running at a fairly coarse-grained simulation. The planet Earth here, in this case, is simulated by a bunch of uh, spheres. And you see that there are hotter spheres in the middle because, of course, we have the core. But yeah, that object, it just makes some waves. Obviously, everybody on the planet is going to die in the nuclear winter or whatever that follows. And uh, the oceans will probably boil, but eventually they will recondense and life might once again return to Earth. So how do we make that actually go through the planet? Well, logically, we could just make the asteroid go faster, and thanks to physics simulations, we can do that. So, this is what happens if it's 200 kilometers per second. It makes a bigger hole, it doesn't go much deeper into the Earth. How about 2,000 kilometers per second? Again, it doesn't really penetrate that much further, but at this energy, you do start to set up these planetary scale waves, which are pretty darn impressive. Obviously, this is running maybe 100 times faster than normal. What about 20,000 kilometers per second? At this point, we are literally excavating the core and flipping it over on top. And this actually is interesting because the wave of this material flips around the out far side of the planet and then coalesces into forming a jet. We finally get a jet coming out of our planet, but it's not really made of the asteroid that came in. Finally, at 200,000 kilometers per second, you know, two thirds of the speed of light, this has more energy than the Earth, the, sorry, the sun releases in years. And the Earth is just vaporized, but we don't see the asteroid punch through the far side. You're never punching an asteroid through the Earth just by making it go faster. And the reason is that the, so the process of moving through a body is a vector process, right? It relies on Momentum. Now, momentum is proportional to the velocity. The explosion, that comes from energy. And energy is non-directional, but it goes as the square of the velocity. So as you are making it go faster, you are increasing the energy that makes the explosion faster than you increase the momentum that gives you the penetration. This is why impact craters tend to be round, because the energy of the impactor is almost always much more important than the momentum. And that's before we get up to relativistic planet-busting speeds. So how about we just increase the density of the object? So I had it made of iron, let's make it something that's a hundred times denser than iron. Now we've reset the velocity to more sensible speeds in terms of, you know, tens of kilometers per second. And yeah, it just goes straight through the crust and indeed, I, it makes some bizarre jet. It's like splashing into a pond and in fact, that's really what's going on. It's falling into this liquid planet and pushing the Earth out of the way. And then the cavity collapses in behind it and generates this squirt that shoots out. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like a hundred times the density of iron is sufficient to make it all the way through Earth under these conditions. So we can bump it up another factor of 10. You know, this is, of course, 
beyond any density found in the solar system. Even the core of the Sun only has a density of about 180 tons per cubic meter. But we're not quite at white dwarf limit yet. So he, what happens? Well, off it goes, burrowing its way through the core and something shoots out the other side. I think we may have had a success. But now the question I have is what came out the other side, the asteroid or some sort of ejecta? Well, we can actually go into the user interface and we can turn the planet's different colors and we can see there's definitely a particle coming out the other side, which is from the original impactor. So this is a success. But of course, this is completely unphysical because there's nothing in nature that has that kind of density and that kind of size at that kind of mass. Now, neutron stars are smaller than that, but they are held together by their gravity. And if you took a chunk of neutron star material off the surface, it would just evaporate into like hard radiation. I like to point out that your neutron star material is so dense that if you dropped it on the Earth, it would just fall through the surface almost completely uninhibited. The density difference between neutron star material and the Earth is roughly equivalent to the density of a cannonball and the vacuum of low Earth orbit. So that is how little drag it would experience. And since we're on the subject, we might as well see what happens if you shoot a neutron star through the planet Earth. And, well, on a microscopic scale, it isn't good. Uh, truthfully, this is a very poor fidelity simulation. For example, those, um, those um, particles that it's pulling along with it, those should really be falling onto the surface and emitting hard x-rays that blow everything up. But uh, the simulation doesn't have that capability. So coming back to the problem at hand, we don't actually need those densities in theory. What we could just do is have that sort of a ballistic coefficient, and that means cross-section versus uh, mass. So instead of having a spherical thing that is a thousand times as dense as the planet Earth, you could have something which is uh, a thousand times longer in its direction of motion. Therefore, it has the same amount of matter per unit area. And that's what I've got here. It's like a, a piece of a rod. It's a rod 100 kilometers across, 25,000 kilometers long, and it's made of osmium because that's about four times denser than iron. It is a planetary scale version of a high explosive anti-tank round, which uses shape charges to accelerate a jet of metal through the armor and ideally cutting a hole in it. Now, can it cut through the earth? Well, if we switch the viewpoint to the other side, we can actually see a subtle disturbance forming on the antipodal point. And now we can see some color beginning to emerge as the subsurface material jets its way out through the crust in spectacular style. This is mostly the interior of the Earth. You've got this giant platinum cosmic rod thrusting through the middle of the Earth and pushing this uh, core material upwards into a jet, extending thousands of kilometers into the sky. Mixed in, there's a few pieces of the cosmic rod that penetrated all the way through Mother Earth. But generally, the majority of this white hot streaming lava is uh, the sort of mundane iron and silica type, as opposed to the raw cosmic heavy metal type. And none of it makes it to space. It doesn't come out with enough velocity. Instead, it falls back and covers the Americas in an event which, while it comes from roughly the same place as the Chicxulub impact that killed off the dinosaurs, is massively more powerful. In fact, it makes the Chicxulub impact look like a wet raptor fart. And I'm talking about the, you know, dinosaur rather than the rocket engine because a, you know, raptor fart could actually be pretty powerful. Regardless, this is not good. So yeah, I can't recreate the original image using realistic physics, but hey, I can recreate some really awesome planet-busting weapons with realistic physics if you want. And like Peter Cushing, I learned that if you are going to be destroying planets, it's very important to do it wearing comfortable shoes. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.